Hi, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey, and I'm the workshop coordinator for 240 Tutoring. Today, I'm here to bring you part two in our English language arts writing and grammar convention series. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you so that it's easy for you to follow along. Now this is a four part series. If you missed it, part one was on sentence structure and I highly recommend you go check that out. Today we will focus on punctuation. Part three will take one part of punctuation, commas, and do a deeper dive into that. And part four will be teaching grammar to English language learners. So we'll take all of that we've learned and apply it to how do you teach that to English language learners. Now, if you're wondering, do I need to watch this video? If you see your test listed anywhere in this chart, this content does appear. So I highly recommend you stick around. Now let's take a closer look at punctuation. Punctuation marks are used to help readers avoid confusion. And it's whether they're reading a sentence, a paragraph, or an entire text. Now there are 14 punctuation marks in the English language, and we're gonna take a look at each of those. So first we have a period. That appears at the end of a declarative or imperative sentence as well as in abbreviations like Dr. or Mrs. So an example, he cooked dinner, and you can see that period at the end of that declarative sentence. An exclamation mark appears at the end of an exclamatory sentence or after inter interjections. So hooray, they won the game. Then we have a question mark, which appears at the end of an interrogative sentence. So when does school start? That's a question, so we put a question mark at the end comma, which part three we'll get into even more, is used to separate words, phrases, or clauses, and to provide clarity within sentences. So, Thomas played with his trains, comma, and Andrew played video games. Then we have semicolon, which is used a lot like a comma, but in different situations. It's still connecting sentences, but this is used to connect to independent clauses without a conjunction, so you see here, I went to Target to buy one thing. I came home with 20 things, but a lot of us can relate to that. There was no conjunction here, so we used a semicolon, unlike this example up here that had end as a conjunction. It can also be used to separate items in a list if commas appear within the listed items. Next, we have a colon, which is used to introduce a quotation, example, or a list. It can be used for emphasis or even in numerical uses. It can also be used to call attention to an explanation or amplification of a thought. So in this example, Christy has three favorite foods. We're introducing a list, so we use that colon, tacos, nachos, and fajitas. Next, we have a dash. Dashes are used to indicate a range in time or a connection between things. They can be used also in place of a comma, colon or parentheses. So in this example, she was a professor from 2012 to 2020, so a range of time. She ordered all of her favorites for the party, tacos, nachos, and fajitas, so we used it in place of a colon here. A hyphen looks a lot like a dash. If you notice, they look very similar. In fact, they look exactly alike, but these are used in, to create hyphenated words. So here, the class took a pretest at the beginning of the unit. So since it's in that word, it would be called a hyphen. And I've got these over here because they're so similar. Parentheses, brackets, and braces. Now parentheses are used to set off parenthetical expressions or additional information. So we're using that to separate the information. Sometimes these can take the place of commas. Example, her daughter, a senior in high school, is looking at several colleges. So we use those parentheses to set that information off. Now brackets are used for clarifying information that could actually be removed from the sentence. So in this example, we're using the brackets. He is from Texas, or we could say he, the owner of the company, is from Texas. So that information isn't necessary to the sentence, so we put it in brackets. Now braces look a little bit different a lot like a bracket, but they have this little point that comes out at the end. These really aren't used very frequently in writing, but they're more commonly used in mathematical expression, such as this example right here. You can see those braces way out here at the end. This example actually has all three of these. Our last punctuation marks we're gonna look at, apostrophe. 
Now, apostrophe is used to show possession or in a contraction. Now, in possession, it can be real easy to use these incorrectly, so let's take a look. The company sign was enormous. We're trying to show that the company owns the sign. They possess that, so we put an apostrophe S. We can also say the Rogers car broke down on the highway. Now, since the Rogers already ended in an S, all we do is add the apostrophe. We don't add another S, because then it sounds like the Rogerses. So the Rogers, apostrophe, car, so we're showing the Rogers own that car. Now, or they possess that car. Contractions example. So the family didn't get to go on their beach vacation due to the tropical storm. We took the words did not, combined them for a contraction, so we used an apostrophe to show that. Quotation marks. Quotation marks are used to separate a direct quotation from the rest of the sentence. So I'm so ready for Christmas break, the teacher said. Now sometimes you will see singular quotation marks if they're within a larger quotation. Now, an ellipsis, the last one, is used to omit words from a quotation. So for example, Martin Luther King said, now is the time to, ellipsis, transform our pending national and the rest of that sentence. So we omitted parts, so we put an ellipsis in there. Now let's take a look at a couple of practice questions. Which of the following punctu punctuation marks shows possession? You just have to know this one. Hopefully when you see possession, you know that's an apostrophe. I'm hoping you could easily rule out brackets and question mark. Most everybody knows what a question mark does, goes at the end of a sentence. Brackets, hopefully you can rule that out and at least get it down to these two. Now this next question is actually asking you to apply what you know in an instructional context. So a student writes the following sentence in their story. His mom said, go clean up your room. What punctuation should the teacher help the student understand is missing? Now, hopefully it's when you saw the word said, you know that was a quotation, and we are lacking quotation marks that would need to go here and here. Now, comma was there, so hopefully you could rule out A, that was correct, because it said is missing. A question mark, hopefully you rule that one out, because you know it's an explanation, an exclamation. Excuse me. Now, I hope you found that helpful with punctuation, and I hope you'll be on the lookout for parts three and four in this series. Again, you can see our study guides to learn a whole bunch more about grammar and writing conventions, and follow us on social media. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We'll take a look at those, and of course, you can email us at workshops at 242tutoring.com. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope to see you for part three.